the next speaker is Nadia Navaretti. Um, she's interested in the beauty of the landscape. Her subject is creating productive and uh, profitable landscapes with native plants. Uh, I've got to kid her a little bit. Uh, I saw her pile of, uh, of uh, samples over here, and I thought, I wonder who's carrying all those weeds into this uh, presentation. Nadia, uh, have at it. Yeah, I got that joke all the time. <laughs> but I hope everybody here knows that some weeds can be good. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. I'm going to... Well, I'll try to talk about dif different things regarding native plants, uh, how you can make profit out of them. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, some of you might know me. I work for Lincoln University in Jefferson City. We are a very small university. Let me see. And we, we were created in 1866, but we were accepted of officially in 1890. So when you hear about uh, universities, uh, 1890 institutions is us. It's, it, they were originally, originally black uh, universities in those, back in those days. Now it's very diverse. And before I continue, I'd like to introduce Sue Badalette. She's our landscape designer. I've been, we have been involved in the creation of native gardens, and I would explain that in a minute. I ran the Native Plants Program at Lincoln. We started it back in 2010, and uh, the goals of the program are to promote the use of native plants for conservation, to improve biodiversity and in rural and urban areas. We are very much um, uh, working in more rural areas these days, but we plan to uh, move to, I'm sorry, in urban areas. It will move more to the rural areas. We also are promoting, trying to increase awareness about their pot the potential of native plants as specialty crops to provide income in urban and, ru and rural farming operations. So that uh, it's related to the, this topic is about. We are, have been trying since I started working for Lincoln, and I've been, but my background about native plants goes back. I'm originally from El Salvador, and I remember growing, no, I, I still remember, growing up uh, with a backyard full of mangoes, and oranges, and uh, limes, and it was, for then it was just normal for us. We, in El Salvador, we try to grow food, we try to grow plants that you can eat. I mean, you can get uh, some food out of it. Instead of when I came to this country back in 18, 1986, the first, the first thing I noticed is that there was so much grass. There's, there was nothing interesting about grass to me. And then, uh, or they were growing flowers that they, they, they were just all the same. And that was the case when we moved. I, used, I live in southern Illinois first, and then we came to uh, Missouri with my husband. And the first thing I did was to pull the Esperias because I knew that they were not native. And we were, since then, we have been adding as many native plants as we can because I understand the connection with the natural world. But... Uh, I first, the first idea was when we talk about native plants, people were interested, like good for landscaping. Grow Native is a program that has been promoting very successfully native plants, but it was mainly about landscaping. Every time I gave a presentation, people would ask me, so what can you eat? What, can, what native plants can you eat? And then I, I started getting interested. I started learning from people like Sue, and I would mention, that during some of the plants that I will talk about. We, uh, grow, we work across the state. We, grow, we work in Kansas City, Marshall, Jefferson City, and in the Boot Hill for now. We have uh, two outdoor laboratories, one in Marshall, one in Jeff City. They all have about 80 species right now and we offer tours uh, as requested, and we have demonstration gardens. 
right now, I mean, it's pretty, pretty brand new. It's not even a week, uh, maybe a month ago, that we got the announcement that we got a, a funding for this uh, new project. If we call it FINCA, it's a fa a, which the acronym for Ma Families Integrating Nature Conservation and Agriculture. The idea came because in El Salvador, we have FINCA, some of you might know that word. How many do you know some Spanish? Well, Finca is on a small farm in Latin America, in El Salvador, in other places, Central America, where you can grow as many things as you, as you can possibly. Yeah, because people live in their farm, and they uh, usually have a main crop, but usually the native plants and the marginal land is left alone, so there is always diversity. So being in El Salvador, I mean, being from El Salvador and living here forever, I think, because my husband is from Iowa, so I'm staying here. I like to, I wanted to bring something from my country. And so we're getting the, we're uh, adopting fincas now in Missouri. This is just a project, as I say. But as we, we have a, um, well, so the main goal for the finca is whether we are going to replicate replicate this farm diversity and transform it into a small, um, what I said, maybe forget about it, maybe I, I did it, <laughs> it looks, it's too long. But it's just the main goal is to adopt fincas from El Salvador, the idea of finca into Missouri. Um, we have, um, the idea is that we use mostly native plants. I know many of you, how many of you are farmers or at least grow your vegetables in your backyard? So I'm, um, so it's wonderful. So now you, is, if you already have your vegetable garden, how many of you have native plants in your yard? So I hope after I'm done talking, you might adopt some native plants that can be good for food. <laughs> well, you can eat them. And of course, I'm not against plants that are edible, that are non-native, but you have to be careful about things like bush and isacco, for example. So yeah, we, there is room for those weedy plants that are edible. So this is the idea the, for the finca in Missouri. We are gonna involve, include, if you can see the numbers, we are gonna include woody edibles. Again, this is all natives. Except for the number two, where we have a, well, we are going to call conventional gardens, vegetable gardens. We're going to try to grow ethnic vegetable gardens and uh, vegetables. Even we had tried with jicama. If anybody is familiar with jicama, we have grown jicama at Lincoln. And we're planning to grow, to include it in, in this, in this uh, finca. We, we're going to have permanent gardens with native plants that produce greens. We have, we're going to establish a prairie. And if some of you have heard me talking about it, I'm very passionate about creating or providing habitat for pollinators in your farm. You, there is always room for them, even if you are from rural or urban areas. And the more we, if we start, maybe we can be, convince our neighbors and they can be, we can create corridors in cities. If you haven't here, haven't uh, read Bringing Nature Home from uh, Doug Talamy, and I can give you those names at the end of the presentation, that's a book that will, if you are not convinced, that book will make you uh, adopt those uh, native plants in your land. So the, and we are also having living fences around the perimeter. This is a one acre piece of land that we're planning to do. And we're gonna have an area for gathering, of course, and, the, and there is a house right next to it. And I, we have a, this is actually a, a model for Haywood City. It's a very small town that is located about 10 miles from Sykeston in the Boot Hill region. And we, the community will be involved. This is private land. 
but the, the owners have, are going to let us use this land. And the point is to involve the community. We are create, so we are, again, this is only one month after we were uh, approved. We have been approved for funding, but we already have uh, the community involved in this project. And we, they are going to be involved in the, in, um, in the planning. This might be, a, it will be changed with their input. So um, we're planning to include plants that can be used for food, some that can be, can be grown for seed production, Others can be grown for, nur as a, a, for nursery production. And I got some information from the already, uh, people that are already growing these plants. So to give you an idea that, that the native plants can, could be profitable if we plant well. And of course, and, and this is, all these should be part of this. As we do our farming, we should think about ecological the ecological service that we're providing. If we are growing a, a bee balm for seed, you're gonna be providing nectar and pollen for a pollinator and a butterfly in the summertime. So you can, if you think about those things, you won't feel too bad because you are providing food, but at the same time, you can get some profit out of it. We'll see how far we can go. Let's see, we, let's see. I have how many minutes? Okay, so I'll try to go stop. The, well, I'll just show you some native plants that I think have a lot of potential. This is in general. These are all native plants that, can, that are edible. We have been reading books. Sue has been teaching me a lot. Um, she, grew up in, uh, she grew up in Missouri, so she knows a lot about native plants and has consumed them. And I've been doing that lately. I think for uh, the top uh, plants, I think wild leeks is one that should be planted here in, the, in Missouri. It should be grown and it's very, could be very productive. They are already grown. How many of you know ramps? Uh, how many do you think it, do you think it's uh, really worth trying to produce it with us? So we have four people already here. It could be, and we actually this year we, we um, gathered some seed. I was lucky that I found a patch near my home. I won't tell you where it is. <laughs> because it's a public land. So I wouldn't dare to even to dig it, of, dig anything, of course. But uh, I've been, I got permission to get the seed, so we're gonna do some research about it. It takes a lot of time to grow it from seed, but uh, we're gonna also try to grow, see how they growing them from um, the tubers, uh, if it's easy. But it's still some research going on. But um, if you see here. Rams have been found in these green counties. But it could be, I mean, by looking at that, it could be that the whole area, this whole area, had a ramps. Maybe people don't want to say anything about it, but it might be that you have it in your land. And one way, a place where you can find them, growing in your place, if you have a, an area near a creek, that is, is um, in the banks of a creek, but they don't like uh, wet feet. They like drain, good drainage soil and, and sandy soil. And we already have them at Lincoln in the community garden, so you can, could come to see them. We gathered some of the leaves and we created some recipes. That it was extremely tasty. And just to give you an idea, Havana bulbs can be from 10 to $12. But usually, these the ramps that I know that they have been that are produced commercially, I gather from the wild, which is bad. So, but now there there are efforts to to propagate it. So the wild populations are not depleted. And who hasn't eaten lamb's quarters? I hope and everybody has. How many haven't eaten? You have to try it. This is it's a non-native species, 
but it's rich in nutrients. It has lots of iron. And we, because it's a weed, we don't pay attention to it. But I, we have a farmer's market at Lincoln, too. And I saw a, a farmer s selling the tips of the lamb squatters, and he was selling it. So if you do a little bit of marketing and some be creative and bring some recipes how to use lamb squatters, I bet you can, do it. you can sell it. Because many, I know, we work with uh, seniors, and they always remember when they used to eat lamb squatters. Uh, or like pork salad is another one. And pork salad gr it still grows everywhere. So, they, so if you learn about what you have in your land, you might be able to, to grow them or to sell them. Um, watercress naturally needs, um, it, it needs very cold water and running water. But it can be grown in aquaponics. And uh, I saw a um, system in Milwaukee, in, in Wisconsin, the growing power people, they do it. So I, I hear, I didn't go to the presentations, but if you have already your aquaponic system, that could be a potential plant that you can grow. Cocktails, how many people that have a pond doesn't complain about cocktails? Cocktails can provide all kinds of food. And you can eat the rice, some you can eat the shoot, but it's kind of hard, it's kind of more like fun to eat them. But the pollen, the same thing as honey producers, sell the, the bee pollen so expensive because we know that it has a lot of nutrition in it. Why not selling cocktail pollen? If you have a big pond with lots of pollen, we have been trying to get this pollen, but we, I, don't have a, I don't have access, so maybe we get too busy. But if a, if a farmer will come to me and tell me, I have a lot of pollen, would you like to buy it? Or if you are interested, let me know, because uh, we'll be happy to try it and see. We would like to try recipes. So people can get, with the, you can hear it almost like, his, like, like little tales that people use the pollen. But if we really show that we can eat it, then you, can, you might be able to get some uh, income out of it. Another one that can become a little weedy in pumps, you can, the leaves are edible, the seeds are edible, Rhizomes are edible. If you see it in Asian markets, and of course, uh, the, these can be used for arrangements, the pods. I found this in the internet just to check on prices. A pound of leaves can be from $7, and the other one was like 14 ounces for $9. And this is the Asian market. But we all, I'm sure that here everybody likes to try different uh, sources of food. It's kind of, it's kind of, um, it will be very interesting. And has anybody tried lotus leaves in any way? Well, it's, it's very popular. And you can find them in, in markets like Kansas City and St. Louis. Could be a market for farmer's market. Another one. Jerusalem artichoke. Who hasn't heard about Jerusalem artichoke? We actually like it for doing stews. And, and this patch is actually in my yard, so you can imagine. I live in the city, and it's a little while. And, but we grew it only because the flowers and the birds love the seed. But I didn't think about the food. And you can, you, I, did, I haven't been able to find it in a farmer's market yet. And we all try, or in the small, in the small markets, it's usually found in the big stores. So that could be a potential for, for a small farmer. And we're going to include it in, the, in our finca. This is a very common plant that grow in dishes, cup plant, wonderful for butterflies. And you can actually eat the leaves. And that I, I learned from Sue. 
And I wasn't sure about it because it has a, has a very kind of strong uh, uh, smell. But they were very tasty. We actually um, eat them, ate them like spinach. This is usually in the springtime. And one thing we're doing at Lincoln, and it will be part of the finca, is that we're establishing these plants. And we're going to, uh, because usually you hear the native plants, you can only eat them in the spring, the greens. So we're going to harvest them constantly. It will be some, uh, some research. And we're going to determine if it's really, they're really good through the year. So and if we find a way to market them, we will sell them at the, at the market, or at least another farmer can do it. And this is another plant in the sunflower family that has very tasty leaves. It's called Golden Glow. The leaves are also edible in the, in the um, spring. Hairy Mountain Mint is another one. Besides being wonderful for beetles, I mean bees and native bees, and butterflies, you can actually do, a, you can use the leaves and the flowers for flavoring. It's very strong smell. And I think I have, we have one. Thank you, sir. And I have a, a recipe using hairy mountain mint. We have plenty. I have some in the back. We will pass them at when, we are, when I'm done. Dittany is another plant in the mint family. The, the name suggested, Cunilla oreganoides. It tastes just like oregano. You don't need a, a non-native oregano. We have also a recipe about using it. And elderberry, I guess I don't have to say too much because everybody knows how far elderberry has gone. So that has to be part of our finca. If you remember, those of you who have been at, the mar at this, at this uh, conference, maybe five years ago even, people started talking more about elderberry, but it wasn't, nobody got really serious about it. And now if it, there is even an international conference that is going to take place at the university in Missouri. So there are so many plants that others in other countries that are native to this country that are appreciating them more. So we just have to learn to identify them and try them, eat them. Persimmon, if you have uh, um, hands, you have a chance to try persimmon, do it. I know everybody has the maybe had the bad experience that I had <laughs> with a green persimmon. My own husband did it, and I didn't know that it was him until years later. But now I, had, I ran into a couple, but I don't mind it anymore because they're so good. And we have a recipe that, uh, for that too. Five minutes? Okay. And let me just go uh, fast. This is sumac. You have here about sumacate. You can use it. Red bud is another example of a plant that uh, is there, grows everywhere. Everybody, the flowers are edible. It might be that you don't sell the flower itself because there are so many. But what about if you sell greens in the spring, gather some of your red buds and put them in your bag with the greens? Wouldn't it look pretty? People like it. We, we, people would like it, and we were eating them. And now we're uh, at Lincoln this year with one of our programs. <coughs> now, um, I will uh, show you some of the plants. I, I'm done with my presentation here. But I brought samples. This is another idea for to make money out of native plants. We have a... We have little blue stem. This is a, a seed that is, uh, I forgot how much it is, uh, Sue. Uh, $20 so you can pass it, and uh, you can put it at the, in the back. We'll gather it in the back. Uh, we have this. We have a blazing star. We ha uh, at Lincoln, uh, I mentioned that we have the outdoor laboratories. 
we gather seed from just one plant. This is all we got. And it's, I mean, you can do it even in a star, little. In your own front yard, backyard, you have beautiful plants in the summer, and then you can gather your seed in the, in this, in the, in the, it might look weedy for some people, but if you start thinking that you can sell the, the, those weeds, then it might be, maybe you change your mind. And even your neighbors, it's, with, through the years, we have convinced our neighbors that we're not going to change. Maybe they haven't adapt, adapted to many of the plants, but I see some of the native plants here and there that we grow in our yard. Like this one. Let's see, this is lead plant. This is just the seed head, and it's a legume. It has beautiful purple flowers in the, in, in, in the summer. Brings the butterflies and the, mainly the native bees. You can, you're welcome to grab a little bit of seed. We have plenty. So if you want to get started, because I want to mention also that we have a, one of the, the services that Lincoln University does, the Native Plants Program, is to offer native plant propagation classes. We're going to start with our first one in February, and it will be every two months. And if you are interested, please sign up your name and we'll send you information when we're ready because we don't have the dates yet. And otherwise, you can find us in, in the website. And just a couple more things we have. <laughs> yes, prey drop seed. It is $70 a pound. It's beautiful. It's one of the few grasses that the city of Columbia, Parks uh, and Recreation, has adopted in many of their plantings. And you can just plant it in, uh, as a border and it stays put. It's very beautiful. Grab some seed and try it. And Sue said that it's best like popcorn, but I think it smells like different. <laughs> prairie, prairie drop seed. This one, this is one of our favorites. Our director, she's a, she's a community development person, and they say this, she likes to try different rattles. So she was so excited when she, she started, she was using this in one of her storytelling sessions. So that was, a, but of course, it's a good plant for bees, they, they bloom early in the spring. It has beautiful purple flowers, this particular one, a blue baptisia, or blue indigo. And it's hard to grow, but we can show you how to. And is that, is, do I still have time for questions, or should I stop? OK, I'm just going to pass Illinois Bando flower. Yes, and yeah, I know there's, and, and this is Patrick Spee. So I found that this summer I lost even my natives, and I was very reluctant to water because I felt like I needed the seed and the plants to um, adapt. So do you, do you recommend not irrigating the natives? Do you recommend that we force them to adapt? It depends. If you are a farmer, you might have to break the uh, well, you have to, you might have to do it if you if you if you want to make profits out of it. But at Lincoln University, we had to water a couple of times, really good good water. I mean, watering everything good, but not all the time. And it was because we we have our programs. But if I if my if, my, if somebody would ask me what my cho choice would be, it's not to water. I don't water at home. And I was concerned about some of the milkweeds, and even the milkweeds did awful. I was thinking about the monarchs, and I water maybe two or three, and I have some in pots. But it, I would, it just depends on your purposes. Hmm? And yes, we have a, um, I mentioned about our na Native Outdoor Laboratory in Marshall. It is a two acre 
is one acre garden with a diverse, including a rain garden, and also we have a, an acre prairie. It was, it was not water at all. And some of the seed, it looks just like, this came from Lincoln, but it, all the plants made it. Their short, the growing season was shorter, but it still produced abundant seed. And then we leave it for the, in the winter for the birds or the, mm-hmm. There was a slide that had a lot of native plants listed. Can you go back to that so we can write that down? <laughs> I can give you the list. Okay. I have it with me. And yeah, it's hard to talk too much in 20, 30 minutes, but I'll be happy to share any information. And I have, we have the recipes for you. And I realize we are, we have enough for everybody. So I'm just gonna go to the back and then I will pass the information and I'll give you the list. Any other questions? Thank you very much.